The one thing I haven't got to do in this room yet is jump on the bed! Yeah! <laughs> You guys, we are here at our Cortez build. It's done. And I'd like to say finally, but it went really fast. And this has been one of the best projects we've ever worked on. We collaborate with ENS builders. They are our builder besties, as we like to say. And we've done so many successful projects with them, and this is just another one. We're here in the entryway, and the design for this house, it really didn't start out thinking that it would be so symbolic of where our work has gone, but it has really gone to a place of really neutral, lots and lots of texture, no black, which is really weird for the Lifestyled Co. In Organic Desert Living, we are known for high contrast, a lot of black, a lot of white, and this project just took us and we went for it and pretty much went with no black. So because we decided to keep the black super, super minimal, we didn't use any black in any of the hardscapes, none of the plumbing, none of the lighting, we were able to really keep things neutral and let the texture show through. So while this is a huge house, we were able to keep it kind of intimate and make it feel really warm because of the absence of black. So it's just really balanced, super natural. We feel like it's gonna be timeless forever, so you're not gonna to have to worry about those trends. Oh, should I do printed tile, should I not? This palette is just super timeless and gonna give you a lot of range and longevity. So starting here in the entryway, one of the first pieces that we designed in this build was the door footprint and what it would look like. We knew we wanted a door that was solid wood. We really wanted to give a look of an aged door, but in a new build, that becomes a big challenge. We wanted it to look like it had been here a while, but again, we just built it. So we ended up with this beautiful double wood door. We are obsessed with this fantastic brass handle. It just leads you right in. And then it, upon coming into the entry, we kept it very simple. The entire house, you'll notice in the styling, things are simple. We built it that way. We did it on purpose. Part of designing is knowing when to pull back. And it was hard. It was really hard. But, but in pulling back, we were able to let so much of the hardscape show. So we went with wall-to-wall -wall shiplap here. It allows you to draw the eye up, but also leaves a really blank canvas. Obviously, the furniture that's in here, we hope, stays with the house. But for a future buyer, if for some reason, they have a different entry piece. It should go really seamlessly with everything. And then moving into the dining room, this space from the second we designed it with the wine cellar, we wanted it to feel like an indoor outdoor dining opportunity. So we want you to think about opening a bottle of wine or having some iced tea on a regular day and feeling like there's not a lot of pomp and circumstance around it. You can just kind of slowly move into this beautifully rustic space, enjoy your meal, keep it really light and, and airy and simple, have some wine, of course. Uh, we're rosé fans, but we felt like the pink of the rosé aesthetically might not be the best choice, so we wanted the wine to blend with the house, naturally. So that's kind of how we got that um, arrangement in there, and I want to show you something. There's a little peek in here. One of my favorite parts of the wine cellar. We've got this little footprint of prints here and a vintage basket that I just think is a really sweet little detail that we thought about so that every time you came in here there was something to peek through. So yeah, I, I would, wouldn't be mad if I had to fill this thing. In the great room. It is such a great room. This room, coupled with the front door, is what started all of the alternating wood tones, creating all of the depth with how many different variations we could get between wood grain and wood stain. And this ceiling is, is really what we were not willing to ever compromise on and i'm glad we fought for it <laughs> because it turned out so beautiful so with a ceiling like this we created a lot of depth and again a lot of that aged warmth that we're always going for in our designs by dropping the six pendants we were able to kind of bring it down a little bit but still give plenty of light we would typically in a room like this maybe do a big single chandelier or something like that but we truly didn't want to compete with the ceiling we wanted to bring it down and make it feel earthy so that when you're laying and, and hanging out in this room it wasn't distracting it just kind of felt like it went with you um, the limestone fireplace the rattan cheeses like can we watch the bachelor together here 
Um, that's if you want to put a TV up. I, I'm internally conflicted in terms of if I could deal with the TV being in this room, but this is a real limestone surround fireplace. It is almost as tall as I am, pretty big. Um, gas, of course, and I can just picture like the chicest boucle stockings here for the holidays. This art piece, kind of a, a funny story behind it. it. We had it at our warehouse and we loved it. We thought it would be perfect. But when we got it here, it showed really blue and we could not figure out why. So Rachel, one of our lead designers, she is full of amazing talents. She got a good old can of paint and made it look like a beautifully commissioned piece from some famous painter somewhere. And we are just obsessed with it. So when it went up yesterday, we were over the moon and so incredibly thankful for her talents. <laughs> So I'm a barefoot kind of girl and I love the feel of wood on my feet, but I also love the feel of jute and sisal and all of those natural materials that kind of give you a little bit of a coastal feel, but ultimately really earthy, super durable. So we layered the rugs in here with both of these jutes and then we also layered the rugs in the dining room that we were just in so that they would help pull the space together. Although it's a huge room, there's plenty of room for them both to exist and not compete. Enough wood here for quite some time. We wanted all that texture. We wanted to keep it really open and soaring. And you could honestly probably put like five trees in that little area, but it adds so much art. And we really wanted to play with that space instead of doing another built-in, like maybe you would normally do. We wanted to keep it light and, and really textural. This is the third time we've had the opportunity to work on this floor plan with ENS Builders. And every time we do it, we are making changes and trying to get to absolute perfection with this particular floor plan. We felt like adding the dining table in the kitchen cabinetry design in the kitchen was a real game changer. There wasn't a breakfast nook previously, and we want you to be able to have an effortless entertaining, whether it's morning or night. And it also allows the dining room to kind of stand on its own and have a little bit of a different feel. So when we were designing this, we wanted to make sure that there was counter seating. So that's here when you're making your kids breakfast, they'll probably post up here. And then we also wanted to make sure that when you're, when you're entertaining and you might be here at your beautiful Italian range cooking, um, you can easily communicate with your guests and make sure that they still feel welcome. In most homes of this size, your dining room's way the heck over there and whoever's cooking misses a lot and we wanted to make sure that that wasn't going to happen here. The other key component from a design standpoint in this kitchen is the lighting. If you look up, we have all of these spotlight pin lights in brass that we specifically selected for this project. What it does is allows a ton of light but also keeps things really modern. In this design aesthetic, most people I think would expect something maybe a little, a little more traditional or with a drop, can lights, coffered ceilings. We wanted to keep it clean and minimalistic so that we could have a lot of lighting. If you actually count the actual fixtures in here, I think we might even be in the high teens. And that's okay, it all works because we planned it that way from the beginning. Over the farmhouse sink, we'll wand this. Just leave me here. I love it. Um, we placed three of our favorite wicker and rattan sconces which again, bring in that Euro Lux. It keeps things really easy and kind of coastal, but earthy and timeless. This is the butler pantry. If you're so lucky to have a butler, a butler, do you call them that anymore? I don't know. But if you have anyone that can help you prep, this is a great space for them to do so in. And then we're going to the master next. Wait, are you ready to see the most beautiful master bedroom that has ever come out of the Lifestyle Co? Really, it's my favorite, come on. Oh my god, I'm so obsessed with this room. We're in the master bedroom, and we tend to go pretty 90 degree angled, if you will. So lots of clean lines, lots of corners. In this space, we wanted to marry the two. So you're going to see a lot of arching, beautiful roundness, lots of mod shapes. And then you're also going to find the style detail on the walls is going to give you that hard line. And it goes on all four walls, all the way around and allows us to not have to worry about art on the walls. We decided to match the fireplace surround in this space as well as what we have going in the great room. 
again, to keep it really cohesive. We didn't want to compete. We didn't want to add additional elements in here if you don't have to. So it is huge and absolutely balances the size of the room, the statement making nature of the bed and allows us for two really beautiful art moments. Oh, welcome. Can you guys believe this? This bathtub? I mean, I'm not usually in a bathtub in super tight jeans that I can really get out of in a hat, but this is a 60 inch Japanese soaking tub. And if you're noticing a pattern, we tend to design one element of a space, especially from a hardscape standpoint first. So in the entryway, it was the wood door. In the great room, it was the ceiling. In here, it was this tub all the way. As soon as we found the spec, we were waiting to use it someplace amazing. And obviously there has to be a considerable size to be able to use a tub that's as big as a dining room table. But we found it and this is where she shall stay for the rest of her days. So let's take a tour of the shower. But before you step in, notice the arched glass shower doors. There's actually two, not one, but two. So you can go all the way around in a little circle if your heart desires. This thing could wash a car, wash a family, wash a whole gaggle of dogs, which is all, a gaggle of dogs, a litter of dogs, which is my favorite thing on earth. But this shower is such a work of art. The shower lay on the tile is completely custom. Our lead designer, Rachel, she came through on this one. She really did. We designed the entire house together, but there are specific elements that each designer contributed to. And this was Rachel. She wanted to create a tile pattern that was different than anything we had seen. So it was inspired by the original Versailles lay of Travertine. And we did it all the way up the walls in a full surround and then broke it with this beautiful eight point star mosaic. So coming back into the master bath, usually the his side of the bathroom, we feel like kind of gets forgotten sometimes. So this time we styled the bathroom and designed this beautiful brass and white lacquer shelving unit that really adds some additional character to the his side of the space. In the laundry room, absolute game changer, double washer dryer, plus a dog wash, sign me up. We actually, I think we may design our houses for dogs. We're a big fan of dogs around here. So along the way in building this home, we came across this material that is on the floor here. And as a designer, when you come across a material that has range and it can be laid in multiple places and take on a whole, whole different look, it's a really amazing moment. So we laid this in three different places throughout the house and in all three places, it looks so different. So here in the laundry room, we grouted it with a gray grout and it's giving such rusticity. It feels like we built the house around this laundry room and that's exactly what we are going for. The other place it is located is in the kitchen and then it's also in the pool house, which I'll take you in a minute. <laughs> this space can be used as an office, as a den, as a creator space. We really feel like in places where you're doing work, if you will work, whether it be creative or not, we want things to feel effortless and we want it to be static, little movement. We want the mind to be able to open and concentrate. So from the hardscape in the converging of the floor to the oversized woven pendant that gives us so much texture, we wanted the space to just be able to be free and be translated as needed. Oh my God. <laughs> so everyone can have a playroom, but everyone does not have Camp Cortez. Right here, well one, it's huge, and in trying to create a concept for it that allowed the future buyer to have some range in what they're doing with this space, we created a family den, and it's called Camp Cortez. We wanted this space to be able to show that you could have a whole bunch of people sleeping in here, probably kids, and you could also hang out on the sectional, watch a movie, play video games, have a board game night, and feel comfortable. You can get so many people in here. I can't wait to bring my girls here this weekend and watch them probably jump from that bed to this bed to this bed and mess everything up and it's gonna be great. This room is the room that you all wish you had during quarantine. I know I do. This is the workout room. So much range in here. TRX bands, BOSU ball, yoga mats. I would definitely have my Peloton. 
that I haven't treated myself to yet, but want to in here so I can get the maximum amount of wellness in this space. Off the secondary wing, there's of course Camp Cortez and then there's three bedrooms. I'm gonna show you this one. In this design, we wanted to make sure that the house had equal parts masculinity and femininity, giving it perfect androgyny. This space, we were able from a furnishing standpoint to, to make it a little bit more feminine and give it a feel that it had been here for a really long time. So we did this beautiful mirror installation. We actually used a coffee table instead of a traditional nightstand so that it would really balance how rustic this is, adding more rusticity into the coffee table, but changing the height to allow for a lot of openness. In this bathroom, we brought the concrete from the bathroom actually into the furnishings. So this is what we designed first. And when we were designing the cabinets, we wanted these huge drawers so that you could have ample product storage. I can just imagine my products in here like perfect little soldiers waiting for me when I open the drawer. But it's so much storage. And when we created the cabinets, we then contacted a concrete fabricator to make this surround. So the countertop, the splash, and the legs going down to the limestone flooring are three different pieces. And the fabricator made it all and then brought it on site and put it all together here. Here in the detached casita, it is one bedroom, one bath, and has this beautiful living space. We are picturing many a pool party here. In the kitchen, of course, stock the fridge. You can do your share of cooking. You can style it like a bar. I picture the doors open, people in and out, enjoying the pool, also enjoying the sitting area, binging their favorite show. Here in Arizona, it gets really hot, so it would be so nice to have an extra space to hang out in. Afternoon naps in this room. Behind me is the pool bath. So this tile is hand painted tile from right here in Arizona and it is an eight point star and cross is what the pattern and shape of the tiles are actually called. And I absolutely adore that it has the warmth of the gray mixed with the white and the gray stripe. It makes this bathroom feel so artisan and so deep, but ultimately it's still really light. Like we talked about in builds, sometimes things don't go as planned. We were expecting this pool to be done and I probably wouldn't be in it if it was, but everything doesn't go the way we think it's going to. The pool, however, is going to be stunning when it's finished. For this particular design, we wanted it to be light and airy, but have a really Euro feel in the watercolor. So when it's actually filled, it's going to be a really light, light greeny blue. Outdoor living is just as important as indoor living, especially here in Arizona. Even when it's 110, we're all out here hanging out by the pool, lounging. In this particular design, we wanted to make sure that there were plenty of opportunities for you to hang out in the morning for coffee, barbecue, we kept the grill really in close proximity to the kitchen, al fresco dining outside, and then end your evening with a fire pit chat. While I'm the person that got to host this video today, to make a project like this happen, it takes so, so many people. We design this as a team, like we do all of our projects. So from all 22 of us at the Lifestyle Co. and of course, the amazing builders at ENS Builders, we thank you so much for joining us on this tour and we can't wait to show you the next one.